What is up you guys? My name is Austin Marks and welcome to my YouTube channel. So I'm currently a respiratory therapist and on my channel I talk about respiratory therapy, respiratory therapy school, and I also talk about personal finance a little bit. So if you want to see any of that, make sure you check out my channel. So I am also the admin of a Facebook group called the RT Club and on this uh, Facebook group it's basically a bunch of respiratory therapists, respiratory therapy students, and people looking to aspire respiratory therapy that kind of all come together, collab, bounce ideas off each other. Maybe it's about a certain patient, um, maybe it's about a certain ABG, what should I do with this patient, um, what would you guys do in this situation. It's a community where we can all just come together and work as one. So if you want to be a part of that community, make sure you head over there. So I'm going to share what I brought with me to clinicals and then I want to give you guys a few tips about clinicals as well. So with my clinicals, we went to a bunch of different hospitals, we had different clinical instructors at each hospital. Uh, we were also all together, so I know some schools would just send one student somewhere. However, at my uh, facility, what we did was we put five students together. I think that was the max amount. And then we kind of worked our way through um, each patient, so we all kind of took turns doing different things. So there was a lot of waiting, a lot of sitting around. However, I did still get my feet wet, and I did a lot of things. So the first thing that I highly recommend to everyone is coffee or some kind of water source of some kind. Just make sure that uh, you're not sitting there the whole time just dying of thirst. I don't need it. I don't need it. I definitely don't need it. I need it! Second, make sure that you bring your own stethoscope. So this is the stethoscope that I used throughout clinicals. I think I got it at the uh, bookstore for like $10 or whatever. Um, it's definitely not a Lipman, however, it does the job. I highly recommend that you don't buy a Litman until you graduate or any kind of big fancy uh, stethoscope. Just buy it as a graduation present or tell someone to buy it for you as a graduation present. Don't waste your money as a student. You're broke as it is. The next thing that I brought with me, and I had plenty of these, was note cards. So <laughs> by the end of my uh, school, I probably had well over 2,000 note cards. I mean, I had piles upon piles. I think 2000 is probably an underestimate, <laughs> but uh, I had a lot of note cards, let's just say that. Now, I was not allowed to use my phone, however, for studying, I used an app called Anki, and I highly, highly suggest that you use this app. I suggest it for anyone, for any school, any class, not just respiratory therapy. So what this app does is it mixes spaced repetition along with note cards, so therefore, the app has a uh, algorithm plugged into it. So right as your mind is about to forget a note card or forget a word or whatever, it'll show you right before you're about to forget. So then you see the note card and you say, oh, that was easy, show me again in three days. Ah, that was hard, show me in two days. And then it kind of spaces it out even more as you start to learn it. Um, it kind of gets a good understanding of how you're feeling. So this was the best app. I highly, highly recommend this. However, for clinicals, it was paper and pen. So for clinicals, I always bought my own book bag. That way, if I was sitting in a room, I could sit down and study. However, like I said, a lot of times, we were all kind of in a group together, all five of us just going throughout the hospital doing different things. So this is the number one thing that I recommend for every student, every single student, is I think they should get the, uh, the Oak books. So like here's one on um, hemodynamics. Uh, here's one on respiratory care, and then they have one on mechanical ventilation and neonatal pediatric as well. Um, I think the whole bundle was like a hundred dollars or so. Probably the best hundred dollars I spent respiratory school, honestly. So for me, like the mechanical ventilation book, whenever people ask, what should I use to study for mechanical ventilation? I always, always bring them this book because it is a very small pocket guide. However, it has a lot of valuable information. It gets everything straight to the point. So it goes over all the mechanical ventilation modes. Um, it talks about each individual setting, uh, such as like eye time, rate, uh, tidal volume, why you'd want to move one versus the other. And then it also talks about the waveforms and flow. Just so much good information in this little book. It talks about <laughs> Um, what could possibly go wrong with the ventilator, what to look for, so like an example would be auto peep or auto triggering, um, what's going on, how do you fix it, all in this little book. I highly, highly recommend the Oak books. I believe you can go to their website or you can even buy them on Amazon. 
So I did not bring any pulse ox with me, some students do, however the facilities I were at, they were all provided, so we did not need to go buy one. I do know that some students will bring scissors as well, I have no use for scissors, I barely have use for scissors now. If I need them, I would just go out to the nurse's station or ask a nurse. So wrapping up this video, I'm going to give you guys three clinical tips. So number one, ask questions. Um, if you don't know something, ask. And there is no such thing as a dumb question, so just ask away. Um, number two, volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. So you're going to be doing this stuff in the real world, so do it now while you have uh, a preceptor watching over you to make sure you do it correctly. Because if you do it incorrectly in the real world, you could potentially cost someone their life. And you don't want that on you, I promise you that. And number three is to study while at clinical. So you're waiting around, study. Because you're going to be there anyway, so why not study? That way, when you go home, you can actually do something you enjoy rather than studying. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, make sure you leave in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.